In this one we'll look at the principles of how trigger wheels work and the combinations required for the Speedwino. And once you know how all this works, you should be able to look at the stuff on your car and work out whether you can use the original factory setup or whether you have to add an external setup. This is a mechanical representation of an engine. Motor at the back. Crankshaft. Crank trigger wheel. Crank sensor. Camshaft. Cam wheel or tooth. Cam sensor. Let's look at the trigger wheel in relation to the four stroke cycle. Ignition around top dead center. Expansion, gases push the piston down and that's top dead center to bottom dead center. Exhaust, the piston pushes the exhaust out. Bottom dead center to top dead center. Intake, air is pushed into the cylinder. Top dead center to bottom dead center. Compression, the piston compresses the mixture. Bottom dead center to top dead center. Ignition again and the cycle repeats. Four strokes, two crank revolutions, which is 720 crank degrees. Now we'll look at camshafts. In four stroke piston engine, camshafts are designed to run at half the speed of the crank. Note the crankshaft top dead center and the camshaft top dead center. One crankshaft revolution, two crankshaft revolutions, and if you're watching the camshaft mark, it would have only done one revolution. What you would have noticed is we had two top dead centers on the crank in one engine cycle. So any locating pulse on the crank, like a missing tooth, won't be able to tell Speedy whether it was top dead center ignition or top dead center overlap where all the valves are open. This is not a problem if you run in waste spark because it'll spark on both top dead centers and will only ignite the cylinder on the fresh compressed mixture cycle. On the cam side you will have noticed there was only one top dead center in the engine cycle. So any locating pulse here will tell Speedy exactly where it is in the 720 crank degrees of one cycle. Example this is top dead center ignition. So a locating pulse here is the only way to run in full sequential. Let's look at trigger wheels. There are wheels with an interruption, i.e. a missing tooth. And the biggest pro is you can run a whole engine on one wheel and one sensor. And wheels without an interruption, like the four outer slots of this wheel. The con is you need a locating pulse, like this inner slot, and a second sensor. Note the provision of two sensors inside this sensor housing. Let's look at actual trigger wheels. Originally when Speedwino started there were restrictions, which are noted here. Like a wheel had to have a number of teeth that divided into 360 evenly because if any division had a remainder, i.e. a decimal point, it would slow the mega down so much that it couldn't keep up with the timing. Then a year later they came up with a tooth skip workaround. And the way I think this worked was they divided the number of teeth into 360 and any remainder was the number of teeth they skipped. So if you had a 37 tooth wheel it would divide the 36, skip one tooth, then divide the 36 again. This now has all been removed from the wiki, so it's pretty much redundant. And I think all this is done automatically in Tuner Studio, so you don't notice it anymore. Either way, if you're making a wheel, stick to the divide into 360 evenly rule. Let's now go to the wiki. And if you click on supported crank slash cam decoders, you get to the decoder page. This decoder section is a bit of a dog's breakfast, with some information contradicting itself and important information hidden, but we'll battle on. The first thing missing from this page is an explanation of the numbering system used for trigger wheels, like this number here. Common numbers is something like this. This is 36 teeth, if none were missing, minus one tooth. So it would have 35 teeth and a gap of one tooth. This is a bit less common. It's the same 36 minus 1, but the forward slash is telling you there's another wheel with one tooth and another sensor. This is somewhat rare. You will have the 36 tooth plus an extra tooth on the same wheel. This is also rare. It's 36 teeth with three blocks of two missing teeth. This bottom section is factory decoders, and the top four are more universal general decoders. The missing tooth ones are something you would make. The dual wheel is common on European cars, but can be made. And the basic distributor is common on old cars. And these are the ones we'll go into more detail. The first thing we'll look at is missing tooth. 
and it should have crank written here. So we'll click on that and we get here. The only limitation for this configuration of wheel is down here and it says all missing teeth must be in a single block. One crank revolution, continuous pulses, one missing block. There is no tooth count limitation written here, so oddball factory wheels of this configuration should be fine. But if you are making a wheel from scratch, I would use the divide into 360 evenly rule. The other limitation, if this wheel is on a crank, it can only run in waste bark. But if you add a cam tooth and an extra sensor, you can run it in full sequential for up to four cylinders on the standard Speedwino. I think people are working on more cylinders with the Teensy and an add on board, but you'll have to check that out yourself. Back to the decoder. We go to missing tooth cam. We end up here. Missing tooth cam works like a dual wheel setup, but it's all in one wheel. And the first limitation is the number of teeth must evenly divide into 720. The second is the wheel must have at least as many teeth as cylinders, not including the missing tooth. And then it says generally requires double the number of teeth as cylinders or more. This probably means you need double the number of teeth on a cam wheel as on a crank to get roughly the same resolution. And the third, all missing teeth must be in one block. One cam revolution or two crank revolutions, continuous pulses, one missing block. And as with anything with a location pulse on the cam, this can be used in full sequential, depending on the number of channels your Speedwino has, and can still do waste spark as well. Let's talk about cam accuracy, which is covered roughly in this section here. Cam speed is half crank speed, so one degree on the cam is two on the crank. So there's a bit of loss of resolution. Cam wheels are generally smaller than crank wheels, usually a third of the size, which again is loss of resolution. Any slop or wear in the shaft or bearings can add more inaccuracies, and there can also be chain and belt stretch, which can introduce more errors. You'd think all these problems would make a cam-driven wheel untenable, but it does work. Just remember it's preferable to have more accurately made cam wheels. Back to decoders. We go to dual wheel, which is here. Dual wheel is like the two wheel setup I mentioned in missing tooth crank. It's just that the primary wheel doesn't have any missing teeth. And that either or both wheels can run at cam or crank speed. As usual, you put the location pulse on the cam if you want sequential. I don't know if this line is still applicable, but it says like the other toothed wheels, this wheel must have a number of teeth that divides evenly into 360 or 720 at cam speed. Well, I didn't read any divide into 360 evenly rule on the other wheels, so I don't know what's happening there. Back to the decoders. Next is basic distributor, and that's here. Basic distributors give minimal information to speedy. There is only one pulse per cylinder, so it only has a number of teeth equal to the number of cylinders. But the biggest kicker, there is no cylinder position signal, so Speedy never knows where to fire the first one. So the only way to distribute a spark to the correct cylinder is use a rotor button and distributor cap to physically direct the spark to the correct cylinder. Back to decoders. If your setup doesn't fall into one of these categories, or isn't one of these factory wheels, you'll have to ask the forum if they can make a decoder. Otherwise, you'll have to make one of these up here. And that covers decoders. In part two of this video, we'll have a physical demonstration on a mechanical stimulator and how to set up each combination in Tuner Studio.